Ladies and gentlemen, this is 10 tips on a successful ring pour in three, two, one. What's going on, family? This is Garrett Brown Art Studios, and I am back with another video. So listen, this is part three of my mini ring pour series and i'm going to give you all the tips that i know so far all the information that i have collected and i'm going to give you a demonstration so without further ado let's get started so tip number one is looks are deceiving it may appear that the ring pour should be pretty simple pour some paint in a glass pour it out but I've come to find out that the ring pour is just as advanced as your um, blow technique or your flip cup or your swipe in that there requires a fair amount of consistency and patience. Which leads me to tip number two. This may be the most important tip. Patience is truly a virtue. The biggest advice I can give you out of anything else is mixing up your paints a day before. For me, I don't like the effect of bubbles or cells in my ring pores. I want the focus to be on the beautiful rings that um, are showcased. When you mix your paint up the same, same day, it does not have time to settle and you need that time to settle. So my biggest recommendation is to make your paint a day before and whenever you get to pouring the next day, do a very slow stir as you mix the paint up. There, it may have grown a little bit of a film on top where the top layer has dried, but that's okay. Just a gentle stir to get that paint flowing. Tip number three, not as important as tip number two, but it's a very important thing to talk about. You can achieve a ring pour with thick paint or thin paint, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you today. However, I recommend thick paint as it is much easier to work with. Tip number four, transparent paints may leave you in the principal's office. Now, you're not going to be really in the principal's office, but it can lead you to some trouble. Because the transparent paint can allow other colors to um, show up, you may lose what you're looking for, and it's harder to get those defined rings. So I recommend using opaque paints. However, that doesn't mean you can't use transparent paints. What I recommend is to mix a little bit of titanium white paint in your transparent color. Um, it may lighten it up a bit, but it's also going to provide some opacity, which is what you need or purchase um, an opacifying medium, which will take a transparent paint and make it opaque and it won't change your colors. Tip number five, the base coat. A base coat is not entirely necessary for a ring pour. Um, this could depend on the effect that you're going for. However, for the infamous ring pour that most people desire, which are the beautiful rings that are really showcased well, a base, uh, base paint is important because it's going to allow your paint to move and do what it needs to do to stretch out on your canvas. When you don't use a base coat, your paint has a hard time traveling because it's stuck on that canvas. So your rings are subject to getting more stretched. Um, and I'm going to link, if you check out video, um, the second video in this series, you'll see that while I achieved a beautiful ring pour in the end result, my rings got super stretched, which was fine, but I'm here to give you information. And so, yeah, that's just what I did. <laughs> Tip number six, extra, extra, read all about it. Yes, you need extra paint on hand. Don't mix up just enough for the project because somehow I always end up needing extra paint if it's to cover an edge um, or anything. You need that extra paint and you want it mixed up because if you have to mix it on site, it's going to be subject to bubbles, which could be a problem it could not be a problem but we can 
um, eliminate the potential for a problem if we just have extra paint on hand. And we're on to tip number seven. I have found that highly pigmented paints work best for me. That does not say that your regular craft paint or a cheap paint will not work. However, I find the highly pigment paints work better. Whenever you are using a cheaper paint, I would steer clear of using water um, because your rings are not going to be able to hold up. You need that pigment um, so that those rings stay uh, well defined. And as you stretch, the less pigment you have, the less definition that you're going to have. And tip number eight is to pour slow. Take the cup that you're pouring into, if you're pouring into a straight cup, tilt it, pour your paints in slow. You want your paints, one, not to start mixing with each other, two, you're going to create um, less opportunity for air to mix in. And tip number nine is to protect your sides. You can do this with a simple piece of cardboard. The idea is when you're pouring your paint off, with your side, uh, protecting your side um, in your corners, you can save uh, part of the paint, a painting that you like. Uh, more importantly, it keeps more paint on the canvas so that as you move paint around the canvas, you have enough left, which also alleviates for having to use extra paint. Or if you forgot to make extra paint, this is another way um, to save your painting. And last but not least, uh, my tip number 10 is I am iffy on the torch. Um, the torch is used to pop bubbles and air bubbles in your paints and I see a lot of people using them. However, for me, I have noticed that sometimes the uh, torch brings up things that I don't want like other colors in my rings uh, or it brings those bubbles to the surface. So. I have found it works better for me, and this is just with my experimenting, it's not, nothing scientifically proven or anything, that I prefer not to use a torch and let the paint settle and what rises, rises. I find that I have less bubbles when I let them pop on their own, the few that are in the paint, versus forcing them with the torch. All right, so here are our colors for our big pour. So as you can see, I'm gonna stir very gently and I'm going to show you the consistency of my paints. So it runs pretty easy from the stick. However, it's kind of thick. I know that's a horrible way to explain it, but it looks so thick on camera, but it's not truly that thick. So we're going to add some base paint here. All right, so we have our paint. Although you can't see it, I have it as smooth as possible. Um, that was by tilting. So now we're going to fill our two glasses. Um, I'm a big advocate for recycling, so this is an old glass. And I'm going to pour my paint into it. I also have a section glass. I'm going to pour a second ring into this. So we should get two different type of rings here. All right, this is our first ring. Here we go.
So you can definitely see a difference in the rings when using the opaque paint so far. Now, if you can see, I have a little bit of a center that's a bit messed up, and I'm going to show you how you can fix that a bit. It's not perfect, but it looks a lot better than it did. I have a little bit of paint left over, so I'm going to do another small ring right here. We're going to tilt. I did not think that these colors would go so well with each other, but I love them together. Now, I did a lot of stretching on my rings. Um, they probably would have been a bit more crisp as, if I had not stretched them so much, but I still really like this piece and I think it is still a good experimentation piece to help you guys with your ring pours. All right, so here are my colors and my can, and we are going to pour it out and see what happens. All right, here we go with our thin paints. Check out our beautiful rings here. So I'm just going to move slowly.
And even with its imperfections, I still love it. So this is our thin paint. And as you can see, I had a couple oopsie daisies. Um, the base paint, I really was just recycling paint. And uh, I was thicker in some places than others, so it was hard for this paint to move it. However, I actually like that little touch and how the rings kind of go along with the flow right there. Well, if you have made it with me this far, I really appreciate it. I know it's a lot of information jam-packed, but I wanted to share it in this uh, mini uh, series for ring pours. Make sure you check out the first two videos. And I hope you all have an amazing day. Remember, do everything with love. Treat your family, your friends, and even your enemies with love. Please press the like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. And until next time, have an amazing, productive day. Peace.